Hi, this is Ever, Ever Sorter Cars. Welcome to my classroom. Now I've been working, still working and experimenting and, and discovering new techniques using my uh, art spray bottles, palette in a bottle, which is a dot sprayer and fine mist. Now today I'm going to show you a demonstration of a painting I've done. 80% of it was done with just the spray bottles. I started with a quarter sheet of watercolor paper, the spray bottles, a round brush, and a mass pen. And I got a nice surprise at the ending, so don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and be aware of future videos coming down the road. Now let's go over to my painting table. Let me show you how I did this painting and look at that final surprise. Okay, I'm here, I'm using the masking fluid. Uh, this is a mass pen that I have. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting some uh, arbitrary marks down, uh, putting some masking fluid down. This is going to save the white paper for some highlights in, uh, in my final painting here. Okay, so the first step here is to uh, get the, this is a quarter sheet of watercolor paper. Uh, oh, these are, this is artist tape. And what I do with this, I elevate the board to give it a, a little angle so that the water will flow down to the bottom of the page. First thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to wet the paper using the dot spray bottle and some water. Now I'll pick up several uh, colors. This is green number one and I'm going to splatter and spray uh, dot spray patterns, large and small, to get some paint on the paper and get that paint to move a little better with some more water and there'll be a lot of water in this particular painting. Uh, yellow lemon is another color I use. This lightens up the color, gives me a light green with a yellow and green mixture. Adding some more green number one back in. Again, moving the paint around, covering the paper with uh, dots of uh, color. Here I'm using cobalt number blue now the harder I press the sprayer, the bigger the spray pattern. So I can make large and small areas covered with blue. Again, I'm trying to cover the page with a variety of color. I'm looking for a lot of texture. Looking for a lot of variety of colors and values. Letting the colors mix naturally on the paper. And with the paper at an angle, they'll start to flow down to the bottom of the page. So the, the primary uh, direction of this painting is uh, a vertical direction from top to bottom and adding lots of water to get that uh, paint to flow. You can see the water now, the juicy mixture of paint and water flowing down. And I'll pick up, uh, have a couple of paper towels around to uh, pick up the paint that flows down to the bottom. Now you start seeing the paint really starting to move now with a lot more flow. Uh, my vision on this painting uh, when I start thinking about it was I wanted to have a forest scene, a rainforest scene. So I wanted to have lots of texture Lots of green color, because green is the primary color here, with a lot of variety. And I wanted the uh, feeling of hanging leaves and trees and vegetation that you would see in a large forest, with a lot of moisture, a lot of different shapes and textures. So that was my vision when I started uh, working on this particular painting. Uh, it started out, this is started as an experimental painting, but uh, we're going to put this into a final painting before we finish. Adding some uh, lemon yellow to uh, change the value of the green, get a little lighter green mixture, lights and darks. I'm going to have three, three values of green. I'm going to have a light, a medium, and a dark green value.
Now you can really see the water flowing here. You can see the, the paint flowing down from top to bottom. A nice flow of water. But I still think we're still about halfway done. I still got a little more. I got some open spaces here, which I'm going to fill in here uh, shortly. Going to let this dry a little bit, so uh, we'll take this. Uh, we'll take a little pause. Now, moving the paper around direction will help the paint flow up and down and to the left and right. The painting is painting is pretty dry right now, so I'm going to add some more color. I'll also turn the paper around the other direction to work on the other top of the paint. I don't really have a top and bottom designated. I'm just going to go ahead and start up here. Uh, I'm going to add some. Now here I'm putting a uh, what I call a, a determined or directional pattern of water, a predetermined direction. So I put the water on the paper. And then I add the paint mixture, in this case, uh, green number one again, in a dot spray bottle. And as I spray that on that water path, uh, the paint's going to follow the water. And that's a characteristic of watercolor, is the paint will follow the water flow. So I use that, I use that wonderful property of watercolor that it will follow the water. Now here I'm adding cobalt blue in the dot spray bottle. I'm going to add a little more color, make it darker now. I want some dark greens next to those light green areas. So these are shadows. These are areas to break up the lighter patterns. They give me a dark color. I watch the flow now. You're going to see by adding water, this water, this color is really going to start to flow. Now here I'm going to observe where the water is going, we'll observe the pattern. Come up with a design here now. I'm putting some shadows down the left and right side of this particular area to start off with. It looks like it might be a good shadow pattern here. You can see how wet and how juicy the paint is. And just by raising the uh, painting board a little bit the water will flow naturally down to the bottom. Now you can pick the paper. I'm picking the paper up here. And I'm going to move the paint around a little bit. Let it again, moving it a little bit from left to right, up and down. Really, the characteristic of this watercolor is I'm letting the watercolor do the painting itself. The watercolor will take on a characteristic of flow. The watercolor will blend on its own. So the watercolor will really paint the painting. You just have to be patient and work with the flow and work with the color combination. Look at all that juicy color. I love it. You got a nice flow of color. It's all dropping down. So things are starting to work. Okay, we're going to turn the paper around now, work on the other side of the painting again, and the bottom side. Now, I'm going to pick up now, the fine mister is with a black top, it's a companion fine mist. And if you have uh, a fine mist top, you can exchange it with the green color you have in the dot sprayer, because they're interchangeable. So here I'm using the fine mist sprayer with the green number one color. And I'm filling in the areas that I need a little more color in. The fine mist gives you a, a nice way to add color or layering color on top of other color to intensify and add more value more and more texture, more contrast. And here I have a fine mist with the yellow lemon. Again, you can, if you had it on another bottle, you could switch, switch the top, interchange it. Here I'm adding yellow in there to lighten up some areas, giving me a lighter value of green. I'm going to have light and dark and medium type green. Now 
Now the water, is, the water and paint is still flowing now toward the bottom of this particular paper. So I'm letting the, letting the paint flow as it naturally down the incline of the board. Again, because it's really wet, I'm going to let the paint dry. But now I have to start planning. Now, uh, looking at the looking at the uh, reference photograph, I come up with a composition plan, and I've drawn in some dark areas, uh, some tree limbs and some large branches. And I, the only part I used for painting, other than the spray bottles, was the uh, the round brush. So here I'm going to put in some of the dark areas that are tree trunks, some limbs, some of the main shapes that I find from the reference photograph. Again, uh, using the design that I've got on the paper, I'm, I'm adding in the darks at this point with a brush. Very minimal brush work. Now, now you want to make sure the paint is really dry. This is really critical here because with a dry paint. Now I'm going to use the rubber cement pickup, make sure that paper is straight and dry otherwise you'll smear the paint on there with a the, with the rubber cement pickup now I'm taking up all that fluid that I had on the in the beginning with the cement pickup all that masking fluids coming off and I'm beginning to see a pattern of where the uh, highlights are now these could be limbs and branches and leaves parts of the landscape that are reflecting color from the sky the sun's coming through the tops of the trees and bouncing off these objects so now that's now the big painting is starting to take shape beginning to see where i'll go from here but once you get started it takes a little while for the painting to, to really get to a point where you can understand where you want to go 80 percent of this paint was used artist spray bottles. The rest of it was done with a brush. I added in those dark areas and some of the dark uh, undergrowth. You can see here some of the dark areas. 80% 80, 80 was done with the dot spray bottles and fine mist. Now the final touch is coming up. This is really something I want you to see. Now with a with a shield made, it's just watercolor paper shield and with a fine mist bottle with cobalt blue paint I'm going to spray across the bottom right corner a shadow pattern and then on the opposite corner using the watercolor paper shield I'm going to use the fine mister with the same cobalt paint at a different angle and a different size going to spray across that top left corner. The final results, a path of light. I really like how this painting turned out. I really, really like the results that I see here. The tropical rainforest. Now you can use the same kind of technique for backgrounds, for other landscapes, skyscapes, and even uh, waterscapes. Now don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the, does it, hit the uh, notification button so you'll be notified of my next video. I've enjoyed spending some time with you showing you how I created this painting. So see you on the next video.